Welcome to episode 518 of Salcedo Paranormal, and tonight I'm continuing my review of the complete books of Charles Fort. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page, and that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or they're from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here on the uh, stream on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before uh, Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank um, Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing these shows and putting them up on the station, along with the music that you hear uh, when you listen, listen over there. If you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others, rate and review it on your podcast platform of choice. Um, And also, um, look at, uh, excuse me, I lost my train of thought there. Um, You can go over on Amazon and find some books I've written, uh, paranormal fiction and nonfiction. Uh, Also, you can um, sign up for my Patreon page. There I'll be putting out one uh, episode a month of True Paranormal Stories from the Web. And uh, there's um, you can sign up for any level there, any membership tier, and uh, you'll get those. And those will be coming out again like once a month, uh, around at least once. And uh, I don't have have a set time yet, but hopefully within this this month or next, uh, we'll have a a date, um, a regular date going on there. So... Or if you'd like to just make a one-time donation, you can do that through PayPal. I apologize for not having any other um, options for donations, but they're, um, due to technical difficulties <clears throat> in my own low vision, that is the best and only option I've found uh, for donations as of late. So um, welcome to everyone that's here for the live stream. It's amazing to see you all here. And... Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a, a continuation of my review of the um, the complete books of Charles Fort. Slowly working through these, and um, it's amazing how much material there is. And even with it all sort of condensed and summarized, uh, I use an AI to summarize everything. Um, it's still taking a long time. Obviously, I've been doing this series of shows for a long time now, but it's there's so much amazing stuff in there that I I don't mind. So, um, anyway, and hopefully you all enjoy these episodes as well. So I'm still, we're still in the third of the four books, which is called Low. That's just L-O, exclamation mark. And this book has to do a lot with teleportation. Um, and throughout, again, these books are written um, near the beginning of the 20th century. So they, they talk a lot about events, anomalous events from, um, the late 1800s to the early 1900s. So this is far before any kind of common uh, UFO tropes or anything like that were established. So this is part, that's part of why these, uh, this, these books are so amazing to, um, to review because there's things in here that are reports of odd anomalous experiences where the people sort of were not exposed to sort of the, those tropes to um, popular culture and didn't have that to sort of fall back on or to influence them, which is something that some people say is what happens. Um, And I think that that can, but also that's not always the case. But anyway, so here we go with the, um, the, the summaries here. These are all, um, I I basically summarize each chapter and then I read them, these summaries. And then we, I just talk about, um, talk about them a little bit after. So this is, uh, a summary of chapter 12 from the book Low. It says, the text discusses mysterious disappearances of ships and their crews. 
including the cases of the Marie, Marie Celeste. Now, that one, the ship was eventually found, but the crew was not, I believe. Uh, it says the Coben, Coben, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, the Atalanta, and the Freya. And keep in mind, again, this is all late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, in these instances, ships were found abandoned and intact with no sign of what happened to the crew. So, uh, again, just like I mentioned, I wasn't aware of that with other ones. I actually had never even heard of a couple of those boats there. Um, so as the text uh, suggests, there may be unknown forces selectively transporting people and objects. It mentions cases of strange objects seen moving through the sky, including near Bonham, Texas, in 1873, and over New York City in 1880 and 1910. Some cases describe airship-like objects, unidentified lights, or headless monsters. That's quite the uh, image there. Uh, the text questions whether... These cases could um, involve secretive inventors of dirigible airships from Earth, uh, which is a thing that was going on, I believe, at around that time, but also speculates they could indicate uh, visitations of alien crafts or constructions. However, it notes the accounts are inconclusive and difficult to verify. And I just want to... Um, Take a moment here and, and, and say, yeah, that, that was a thing. Airships were being, um, people were working on that idea. But, and so that's definitely a possibility with some things. But then there's other accounts where these people that are in these airships are doing odd and unexplainable things. So I, I do think that's an explanation for some sightings. But as usual, I, don't, I think two things can be happening um, at the same time or in different Basically, two things can two kinds of things can happen, where some can be man-made, human-made, and others can be more um, anomalous. It says overall, the text examines multiple maritime mysteries and sightings of aerial anomalies, uh, considering various potential explanations, including natural disasters, hoaxes, alien intervention, or unknown selective transport forces. There's a phrase. Uh, it serves as an overview of strange occurrences documented in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. So that's chapter 12. And I'm sorry about messing up earlier. I think I said 19th century, just that one, but it was 19th and 20th. I always, that whole thing gets me, messes me up sometimes. Late 1900s, early, no, late 1800s, early 1900s. Anyway. Uh, I'm not good at, great at math at times, but uh, anyway, so chapter 13 here. Uh, this uh, discusses mysterious animal attacks and killings of sheep in England and, I and Ireland in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It references reports of sheep being killed and blood drained from their necks, but no flesh eaten. Sorry about the... Um, the subject matter there. I forgot to look at these ahead of time. Uh, it says it resembles vampire legends. That's uh, odd. After various reported sheep killings, large black dogs are unfortunately shot and the killings cease, but questions remain about what the animals were. Uh, the text suggests these mysteries are not satisfactorily resol resolved by simply... Um, killing a, a dog, and I do agree there, because a lot of these cases, there, there's, the evidence doesn't really always um, match with what, what a dog might do, and even explain why a dog would do it. Uh, it says that's a typical ending to such, a, such stories that shuts off further inquiry. The text cites other cases of weird animal killings of sheep and rabbits, attacks on people, and the inability to catch alleged animals. It suggests these cases have similarities to werewolf legends and indicates there may be more to explore regarding mysterious attacks 
on humans and animals. Overall, the text examines strange historical cases of animal mutilations and killings that uh, raise questions about what type of creature could do such things. Uh, it It suggests conventional explanations of wild dogs may be uh, insufficient. So that's chapter 13. And so, again, there you have things that we've heard about um, in more recent years that apparently were happening. I was not aware of that. Um, so that's just, uh, yeah, hello there, hello there, Derek. Yeah, the, the centuries, the 19th, 20th, the, the, the uh, whole the, when you say the 19th or something with that, with that on the end, I always um, forget that it's the previous number involved. But anyway, so that's amazing that um, there are reports of these things. And I, I guess I kind of knew that, but I just forgot about that, that these kinds of, um, these kinds of attacks, um, uh, let me see here, they were... Um, no, the mutilations were of sheep and other animals. Uh, yeah, they did. Yes, they, they blamed it on the dogs, which, uh, again, in some of those cases, that's odd because when they describe the, the damage, it seems like it's not... It's too, and, and so, sort of the same thing with modern uh, reports of cattle mutilations. The There's no uh, sign of the blood that was taken out, and the wounds are just too clean. Uh, to um, so it's just odd. Yeah, maybe it ties into chapter twelve too. Aliens doing it. Yeah. So there's um, so that's really. I mean, obviously, it's not not good. It's sad that these are happening, but also just uh, it seems like all these things that we hear about in um today that have been happening in recent decades, in, in one form or another, they've been going on for. De- a lot more decades than we thought and back into previous centuries and things. And so it just makes me wonder what's going on there. If it's not a, if these things, these kinds of uh, attacks on animals and people are not strictly modern, then what has been going on and who's been doing that? And are, are the causes or the, the ones doing this, are they the same? Or are they different? Um, but if they're different, then that's quite the, coincidence so anyway uh moving on to the next chapter let's see what this one talks about uh chapter 14 uh says in 1904 to 1905 there were numerous reports of strange occurrences and mysterious events across britain including luminous beings sighted in wales uh religious revivals and hysteria, mysterious fires, animals found mysteriously killed, and more. Uh, in, in Hexham, H-E-X-H-A-M, Northumberland, uh, many sheep were found mysteriously killed and devoured. That's, wow. This one was attributed to a, a wolf cub that had escaped, escaped capti- captivity. But the killings continued even after the wolf cub disappeared. Well, at least they didn't actually kill him this time. Jeez. Um, later, a large wolf was killed, though, uh, uh, and thought to be responsible, but its origins were mysterious. In Wales, luminous flying beings were reported during a period of intense religious revival. The hysteria spread to parts of England. So now right there, to me, that seems like, and I'm not sure if Fort is saying this or not, but it seems like that whole idea of hysteria was used to explain these things away. But also, if people are doing ceremonies, and again, nothing against that, um, and then these there are figures being seen in the sky that are maybe either made of light or giving off light, that's amazing, you know, the timing there. Uh, it says, um, Several people were found mysteriously burned to death in ways that did not seem to match typical fires. There was speculation about spontaneous human combustion or some strange incendiary force. 
I'm not sure. I always have a hard time with that word, but that's so that's something else. Nothing. I never really talked about that in this show, um, but that is a thing that is. So but that's again, it's really odd how all these things that we hear about more in the last few decades seem to be um, seem to be going back to the to the past. Yeah, possibly radiation. Uh, from PDG there in the chat, and uh, Derek says uh, in the the hysteria can actually manifest phenomena too. So maybe it's this weird interplay between both explanations. Right? Yeah, true. Um, going back to the text here. Uh, let me see here. I think I lost my spot. Um, okay, here we go. Animals, especially chickens, were found mysteriously killed on some uh, some farms with their uh, throats injured. Um, at one farm, a servant girl was badly burned under un- unclear circumstances. Um, Fort speculates on potential explanations, including occult uh, phenomenon, secret policing by other occult forces, or teleportation of wolves and other animals to cover up occult events and divert human uh, suspicions. But most events were left unexplained. So that's an amazing point that he's making there, which is that there could be various groups that are sort of going about their business and either um, interacting basically interacting in different ways that uh, that then cause these events. Chupacabra, yeah. Imagine the time travel farm from last night's... Yeah, Trouble Minds. If you ever... Um, anyone, if anyone that listens to this show has not found Trouble Minds yet, uh, please go check it out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, because Derek is making reference there. Uh, imagine the time... Tra- and I, I was thinking about that when it talked about People vanishing because that was part of what we were talking about last night in that show. Um, so there was this uh, story of a, a, a from Greek recordings of a major battle, and I'm terrible at remembering details um, between a Greek and Persian army, I think. And it was looking like the Gre- Greeks were going to lose, and this farmer, this guy in farmer clothes, just mysteriously appeared and. And with a plow or something like that, and the the tide of the battle turned, and they were able to survive. Oh, wow. so I hadn't read the rest of Derek's comment here. Imagine the time travel farmer from last night's show. Uh, again, that's Trouble Minds. Um, actually, let me see here. It was actually this massive re- revenge story: the farmer delivering justice for his slain chickens across time and space. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. Yeah, pitchfork and all. Um, so anyway, going back to the material here, because uh, we're already getting, we only have like six, seven minutes left. Um, these shows can fly by when there's a lot of chat going on. Uh, chapter 15. Uh, the text discusses various mysteries and alleged imposters throughout history, such as the Princess Caribou, who appeared speaking an unknown language in 1817 Bristol. Wow, they're going further back there. The author questions the conventional explanations that label these figures as imposters. Huh. Um, I had never heard of that before. The um, So Fort argues that no absolute proof or clear evidence exists to confirm the alleged identities and explanations given for Mysterious strangers like caribou. Um, the stories told about them are often inconsistent or have clear flaws. So um, let's see here. The text provides examples of other mysterious strangers appearing and speaking unknown languages and how expert disagreed on their origins or offered dubious explanations like trans. Uh, transposed letters to identify their language. 
uh, for it suggests that some of these strangers may in fact be humans uh, teleported from another world or part of existence to Earth, though proof is lacking, uh, of course. Clues like different clothing are noted. Um, let me see here. The case of Cagliostro Cagliostro is discussed as another mysterious uh, stranger who appeared suddenly. Though labeled an imposter, the proof of this is questioned. Uh, Charles Ford argues against firmly established conventional explanations. Uh, overall, the text challenges the tendency to dismiss and neatly explain uh, away mysterious historical events and strangers, arguing that absolute proof is lacking in these cases. It calls for openness to mysteries and alternative explanations like teleportation. That is fascinating right there. That whole chapter is just, wow. Because um, you hear that. I mean, you, whether it's by location with people appearing where they shouldn't, but also um, not even counting teleportation, but just uh, as far as someone being teleported, but someone being able to teleport. Um, either way, that is really an amazing chapter. Um, so, but yeah, the I've, I feel like I've heard similar stories like that before where people will appear and they don't seem to fit into an area. And then they'll just vanish at some point. And, um, and then the language thing it also, to me, that almost suggests either they are not regular humans, but they appear to be, or it, it possibly also, I mean, I'm because of my own experiences with um, some dreams I've had, I do believe that it is possible there are alternate or parallel, parallel universes and so what if when these people show up and they're speaking different languages, those are perfectly normal languages where they're from. But here, no one has any idea what they're talking about. Um, so that's an amazing chapter there. And um, it does seem like there's just so many... I mean, teleportation just really... It, it seems to play such a major role in a lot of things, a lot of unexplainable things. At least it it seems like it can. It's possible, and um, so that that chapter was really neat. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna get through another chapter in this episode, but um, so yeah, that was that was a fun batch of chapters to get through today. Um, so yeah, could be the other side of missing four one one. Derek says, yeah, definitely. So. Um, so yeah, and I hope you all have been enjoying this review of these books because some of the chapters kind of they're they seem I don't know the the summaries seem like they're kind of basic paranormal things, but then you get chapters like that one that we, that I just summarized had summarized and that was a lot of fun to think about there. Um, so let me just check on the time here. I think we got about like about a minute left. Again, don't forget to go and check out all all the people that have helped the show. Um, I, I have links to some of them in every episode description. And then also I always include links to anyone, uh, anyone's projects who is a guest on the show when they are on with me. So, um, please go and check all that out. And I think that will do it, uh, for tonight. Thank you all for listening. And I will talk to you all on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.